Brothers and sisters, Brother John, watchman for that great day. Today is August the 27th. And tonight should be the conjunction with Jupiter and Venus. Now, a lot of you, or some of my friends, have told me not to put all my eggs in one basket and not to be too upset if nothing happens and don't get depressed. Well, I'm telling you the same thing. Don't be too depressed, all right? Don't be putting all your eggs in one basket and don't look for one particular sign as the as the be all end all. But just because I, I've said that and I'm very qualified, I'd like to say we can be very excited with what is about to happen. So the thing is, excitement has nothing to do with, uh, you know, you can be excited and then have a little bit of a letdown um, after being excited. That's part of excitement. If you refuse to be excited and you're very um, standoffish about the, the signs that are right before us, um, you're, you're missing the enjoyment, okay? Sorry, my partial's loose. Um, there's so much enjoyment to be had waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ, all right? If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It doesn't mean it won't happen, and it doesn't mean we're not close. All right, that said, I'd like to read something to you out of the book of Isaiah, and I'd like to point out a few places and give you a little bit of thought on what is about to happen and what is coming after the 27th. All right. First, I'll, I'll say this much. We can give, at least we can heed uh, Brother Daniel Valez's um, um, work and his, um, his pointing to the scripture as it relates to the heavens and the the um, constellations in the heavens and the stars, we can be very certain that this is an identification of the times that we're in. All right. I've, I pointed out in my last video that at 11:30 at night on the 28th of August just before it turns to the 29th, that Jupiter is still right on the um, Zava Java, all right? It's right on that line, in line with Zava Java, as it starts to depart, okay? It will depart. That is, for all practical purposes, the point, at least, of which the foot, Leo the lion, actually is now we could even say it could go a little bit further than that because we've seen from the first time that daniel adjusted because he found other star charts and the hair was still there so he drew the outline of the hair so we have this there's wiggle room it doesn't mean that he's completely wrong don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. what it means is we're watching ultimately bottom line all my brothers and sisters out there, if you're watching Brother Daniel Velez, you're watching, you're hoping, you're praying, you're seeing the rest of the signs going on in this earth. And you're saying, come Lord Jesus, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. All right? So to say that we're going to fall away if someone, if we're watching so uh, intently to one particular uh, brother, okay, or, or a sign that we're seeing, which is obviously connected to scripture, is, is ludicrous. We're not going to fall away. We might be a little bit down about it not happening. That's just natural. Uh, the rapture is the biggest thing in our lifetime, actually in the history of the world. It's never happened before. And it will be such a time as never has been. So with that, let me, let me give you... Uh, Isaiah, we're going to go to Isaiah 26, we're going to read three verses, I'm going to read three verses, and you can join with me and get your Bible and read it, 
All right. Here we go. It's Isaiah 26 and verse 19 and 20 and 21. Here we go. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. What does that sound like to you? Well, to me, when I heard that and I read that, I thought about Matthew 24, 28, where it says, Where the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered. All right? That's what, that's what Matthew 24, 28 says. Now, the next little part of that, Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. What does that sound like? Sounds like Daniel chapter 12. All right? Where, if I go there really quick, not to take that long, let's see, I'll read that. Those that dwell in the dust. Daniel 12. I said it wasn't going to take that long. It takes me a little bit of time to get to the page. Oh, Lord, help me. All right, and it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up. Now, that's the war in heaven. Michael stand up, and the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time... Thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And then here's the part that I just read about um, Awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust over here in Isaiah 26. All right? It says, And many of them that sleep in the dust. Over here it says, Awake ye, awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust. Well, for, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Now tell me that's not a rapture verse and I'll eat my hat, like I always say. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right? Okay. Go back here and get this. So I'm just going to read that whole verse again. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body. That's the same thing as where the carcass is. There will the eagles be gathered. Okay? So as it were a lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, Revelation 13, something, I can't think of the exact verse. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. Awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust, for, they, for, thy, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, and enter into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Let me tell you what. The bride is going to come out of her chamber. The, the bridegroom is coming out of his chamber. The bride is coming out of her chamber. But that's Joel chapter 2, 16. I'm going to flip over to there. Joel chapter 2, 16, and it says, Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Okay? The closet. I think we're in a closet. Okay? If we're coming out of this enclosure, which is like a closet to our spirit, because our spirit cannot go out of this closet, okay? Remember, we're going out to meet the bridegroom in the heavens, as Daniel points out. Daniel Velez. Um, Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Indignation, vengeance, all right? Wrath, okay? We're not appointed to wrath, okay? First Thessalonians 5, 9 says that we are not appointed to wrath, but to salvation through Christ Jesus. Verse 21 in Isaiah 26. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish, there you go with the wrath again, punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. He cometh 
Behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. All right? In Revelation 3.10, it tells us we need to identify with Revelation 3.10 because it tells us what? Because you, because thou has kept the word of my patience. And, and I'll read, I'll go back and forth to read it from one point as soon as I find it. It's two pages, so give me a break. It's at the bottom of uh, a page here, and we got 3.10, Revelation 3.10, because thou has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation or tribulation or vengeance or wrath, which shall come upon all... How many? Can I hear it? How many? How many people? All. All the world. Are you, if you're in the world, it's going to come on all the world. So if you're in the world, you're part of the world, you're here in the world, you're an inhabitant of the world, you're dwelling on the earth, you're part of the world. He says, all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay? And what are we finding out here? What is, what is the call from Isaiah, in, in the book of Isaiah? First it says, thy dead men shall live together with my dead body. That is, that is Matthew 24, 28. Where the carcass is, there the eagles will be. Okay? Together with my dead body shall they sing. Now the dead in Christ in, in 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 13 through 18, the dead in Christ will rise first. All right? The Lord himself descends with a shout and the trumpet of an archangel, the voice of an archangel. Okay? The whole thing is the dead in Christ rise first. Okay? So the very first thing written in here is that thy dead men shall live. Well, they're going to live. They're not going to be like the crepid uh, zombie-looking people. They're going to come up. They're going to have brand new bodies, and they're going to get caught up, okay, out of the dust. Awake and sing ye that dwell. What are they singing for? Well, because they're brand new. They're going to sing. They're going up. Awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust. They, it says they dwell. They live in the dust. Now, you can take that two ways. They've been dead. But now they're living, okay, and they're coming up out of the grave, okay? Just like when Jesus was crucified and when he, when he died in Matthew, uh, uh, when he gave up the ghost, uh, the earth rent and the rocks split open uh, and the dead, the, great, the people that were in the graves, and I believe it's uh, uh, Matthew 28, uh, it's either 28 or 27 and it's a uh, 51 or 2 area where the dead came out of the graves and went into the villages and towns and showed themselves unto the people. Okay? So, awaken sing ye that dwell in the dust or in the graves, whatever, for they, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. The earth is casting out something. The earth is casting out the dead. Alright? Casting out is to be, <laughs> it's ejecting you. Get out of here. All right, I'm getting up. I'm going to sing. <laughs> I'm singing because i got a new body. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were a little moment. <laughs> However long that little moment is, it's long enough to, for us to be with Jesus as, you know, a, a thousand years. One day in his, in his presence is as a thousand years, okay? All right? And it's better than any other place you could ever be. So we're going to be with him forever. So a thousand years, nothing. So come, my people, enter into thy chamber, shut the doors about thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. All right? For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place. And then you go back over and you can go into Psalms, right? Psalms 19, it talks about the sun, right? Go right to that. Right? The sun... He says, remember that in the heavens, God has set a tabernacle for the sun. And in verse 5, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. The bridegroom's coming out of his chamber, and the bride is coming out of her chamber. That's this. Right here, this guy. All right? Anybody that's out there, you are in a closet. 
You are closed up in an enclosure because the closet is an enclosure. You are wrapped up with this flesh and blood that you long to be out of and to be close to home. And that's with Jesus. And that's where we're going. And I'm excited. And the time is near. And we're ready to go. I hope you're ready to go. Brothers and sisters, this is it. Whether it's another month, it doesn't matter. We're at the end. The Jubilee year is ending to the very day. I'm sorry that I'm shouting. I'm just very passionate. I love you all. And I've tried to express my excitement in so many ways and the realization of what's going on also in Jerusalem. I'll touch on that. The thing that's happening in Jerusalem is, is all connected into this big movement about Christian Jews and Muslims. The Christian Jews and Muslims are basically representing what? The harlot. Because iron does not mix with clay. Remember that. Iron does not mix with clay. So you can't have Christianity mixing with um, um, Islamic uh, beliefs at any rate because they don't believe that Jesus, that God has a son. They don't, that's their belief. So there's no mixing those two, even if it's just Christianity and Islam. The other one is that the Jews don't believe that Messiah has come yet. We believe he's come. We understand that he came the first time, died on the cross for our sins. We understand all that, the believers in Christ. But there's two groups, the Jews and the Islamics, and now the Christians that are of the apostate church, which is the mother harlot, which is ruled over by the Pope. This thing that's getting ready to, to happen called Makudashet, which means consecration, is a marriage. It's, a, it's the, the fulfilling of the apostasy. The apostasy is Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians. Hold on. Let me get there because this is, God is directing me, all right? Let me, bear with me. I didn't plan on saying this much, but it's going to do it. Okay? First, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no man but deceive you by any means. For that day, the day of the Lord, the, that day, the day of the rapture, that day, the day of vengeance, that day, the day of wrath, whatever the time is on that day, it's a special day because it's that day. All right? Let no man deceive you, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first. In most understanding, in the Hebrew, in the Strong's word, which I don't have up, and I will check it after this video, but I'm pretty sure it says apostasy, all right? The falling away is the apostasy. The apostasy and, okay, that day will not come until first comes something, an apostasy. The apostasy is, my friends, the consecration of which we're looking at. The consecration of the, the, the harlot woman. The same woman will flee into the wilderness. All right? Because she's not fleeing into heaven. The man child's getting caught up. Us. The believers in Christ Jesus that are waiting for him, that have their lamps trimmed, that realize by the Holy Ghost that we're in a particular time in history. This is the end of the 6,000 years, Genesis 6, 3. All right? Brothers and sisters, we're, we're there. We're there. We need to not battle with each other on our different views. The idea is we're all part of the same house. So you might not see it the way I see it. I might not see it the way others see it. But I can tell you this, that to the letter, Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 26 has been fulfilled. Absolutely no doubt about it. It's been fulfilled to the day. And that day was last year, September the 23rd, 2015. What day was that? The first day of the Jubilee. Either it's going to end on the 2nd of September, which is Tishri 1, or Elul 29, whichever you want to say, Elul 29 or Tishri 1, or it's going to end on an actual physical count of 360 days, uh, which is a year, which would be the, the 17th of September, 2016. Or now, even a little further yet, possibly, 
It could be, it could go all the way to the 23rd of September. Now watch when I say this, because the consecration is a 12-day period from the 12th to the 23rd, counting the 12th, all right, to the 23rd. The consecration, the Makudashet gathering in Jerusalem with the Pope heading it, with the, all the major religions being represented, the Muslims, Jews, and Christians, all right? It's a big gathering, and it was part of the, the forerunners to it were were uh, the gathering uh, uh, in, in Washington, D.C., and others. And this has been going on since 85 because there was a group of people that were interested in doing uh, 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 philanthropy and Christians, and they wanted to sit down. And it, the whole thing's been a movement, okay? And it's coming to a point at which it's going to have a seal on it, all right, at that time, all right, right at the end of the Jubilee and this consecrated time of, of uh, it, it basically fulfills the apostasy. One thought comes to mind, and it, it might fit. Let me just go there and read it because I'm getting this as I, as you see, maybe you, you saw me just get a, a, like a, I call it a brain flash, because all of a sudden you get something given to you, you got to go there. Was it uh, Romans? Where the fullness of the Gentiles be come in? Till the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Till the Gentile error is has been completed. Right? I've got to find that. Ah. I know, 11. It's probably, it is. It's Romans 11. Just got that. It's Romans 11. Yep, the blindness in part. Be not ignorant of this mystery. Here we go, yeah. It's verse 25, okay? This is, this is I'm going to tell you, this is only God. This is only God today. I'm getting it. I'm blessed. For I would not, brethren, Paul speaking, I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Least ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Now, I've looked at that over the years and thought about the fullness of the Gentiles be come in is, is, is the time of the, the rapture. The fullness of the Gentiles being uh, brought into the kingdom, okay? But is it possible, is, it, is, is there a possibility that the fullness of the Gentiles there is not only the people brought into the kingdom, but the people that are brought into the harlot kingdom. There's two women in the, in, in, in the parable of the two women grinding at the mill, all right? There's, one is left, one is taken. Uh, one is taken, one is left, okay? The two women, it's an interesting uh, analogy because two women, they're both working, all right? It goes, connects in with the five wise virgins and the five unwise. You've got two, two groups, five and five, but you've got two groups, okay? One is wise, one is unwise, all right? There's two women grinding at the mill. One is taken, one is left. All right? Two women. All right? The bride is a woman represented analogy-wise. Okay? The bride is taken. The unwise. All right? The bride is the wise one that trimmed her lamp and went out to meet the, the Lord. The unwise virgin is the one that goes fleeing into the wilderness. All right? That's what's going to happen because the unwise are not taken up. And that just confirms... Your woman that flees into the wilderness after the man child is caught up. Now, hold on with me, because I just got something to give you all that believe that it could be the time of uh, the 23rd of September, uh, 2017. I just got this a, a few minutes ago, thanks to my brother Greg Ulford, who called me. I love the brother dearly. Don't always understand where he's coming from, and like you probably don't always understand where I'm coming from. But I try to make it very clear according to the scripture. And I do love the brother, and <laughs> he makes me laugh. I love him. He's a great truck driver, and I just pray for him. Let's all just lift him up. He's been driving a truck all his life, I guess. He calls me up. He's on the road. He's, got, he's just got a question to ask me, and I answered it. I hope I did answer that question properly. Um, we're all part of the same household of faith, okay? Nobody should be putting any brother, any brother that's in a watchman uh, format like I am or like anyone else is, should be putting anybody down for their view. Yeah, they might disagree with it, might not follow it or think about it, but still part of something that a brother is studying 
and, and, and giving uh, heed to, asking God, crying out, seeking, knocking, and asking. All right. So in Isaiah 66, 8, this is, this is what my brother Greg brought to me. This might be just a little longer than I thought. I thought it would be a quick video. But, but in Isaiah 66, 8, I'm hoping to give you a lot of good encouragement and information in this video. It's really coming out. All right. So in Isaiah 66, 8, it says, well, let's, let's back it up here. Let's go, let's go to 6. 66 7 a voice of noise from the city a voice from the temple a voice of the Lord it's not kind of like the voice of the Lord the, the shout of the archangel the you know the voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies isn't that what what first uh, Thessalonians 4 says 416 the Lord himself will will descend with the shout <laughs> trump of an archangel Okay, the voice, right? The voice from the temple. The voice of the Lord. The temple is basically the, the bridegroom, or the, the bride, crying out, Lord, come, that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Before, listen to this now, Brother Scotty, if you're watching this, I love you. But here's an intro, and this has been used for the birth of Israel back in 1948. I realize that, and it's possible. And can a nation be born in a day? But let me read it. Isaiah 66, 7. Before she travailed. Over in Revelation 12, it says, And she was pained to deliver. Okay? And before she delivered, the devil, or the dragon, was before her, wanting to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay? I'm going to tell you something else. The other night, I watched a, a Steve Olson video. He's got something there. There's something in the heavens out by Pluto coming in in the southern ecliptic that is very large that can be looked at as a dragon. As a red, it wasn't red in the picture. It was a little black and white picture, but I've seen that picture before. And that picture showed two eyeballs and a mouth that looks like a dragon, okay? Could be understood in the ancient time as a dragon, all right? But he showed that, he showed this thing moving from Pluto, and it's taking up the whole sky, and it's moving along, and it's putting out something, all right? The idea is, when I got excited, was, where is it in the heavens? It's in, it's before Virgo. It's right in the constellation of Virgo. That's important. At this time right now, that's important. We're watching Virgo. The red dragon is in Virgo? It's just a thought. I don't know if that thing is a red, the red dragon that the Bible's talking about or not, but that thing that that uh, Brother Steve Olson and his uh, and uh, uh, can't think of the other guy's name. I like him too. But anyway, if that is the red, if that is the dragon, if it's a possibility of it being, I would have to say only because it's in the constellation of Virgo. Okay, important. So here's what I want to say: Before she traveled, she brought forth. Before she travailed, before the pains, okay, before the pains. What is the pain? Alas, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30, uh, verse 7, okay. Alas, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. I'm going to tell you, the end of the Jubilee, there will be a year. There will be one year. I pointed out Deuteronomy 24, 5, that there's a year when the bride takes, when a man takes a new wife, he takes his wife and he's able to stay at home with her for one year and cheer her up and do no business, not go out to war. There is none of that. So before she travailed, so before means before 2017, before that sign is seen in the heavens where Revelation tells us that she travails in pain to be burnt, to be birthed, okay, to, to give the birth, to bring forth, okay. And then the devil, the devil is waiting, the dragon is waiting to devour the child as soon as it's born. Remember that. But here we go. Do a little study on your own and see how it fits. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pains came, before the day of, before Jacob's trouble came. Could you read it like that? And before Jacob's trouble came, she was delivered of a man's child, of a man child. The man child in Revelation 12 is the one that's caught up. That's us. <laughs> Hallelujah! Woo! <laughs> Do a Chris Potter. Woo, man! Woo! All right. And who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? 
Shall the earth, shall the earth, think of the earth and what I just read you earlier, the earth is giving up, it's going to let the cast out the dead, the dead in Christ are going to rise up, then we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up. All right? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born in, at once? The nation there doesn't have to be necessarily Israel that was born in that one day. Remember, um, they had to have a UN uh, uh, point. There had to be some point in the time of the founding of the UN, at which point they had to say, yes, we're going to we're going to give Israel, the land of Israel, back to the, to, to, we're going to make a place for, for the Jews over in the land of Israel, okay? And they had to do the paperwork and do all the little uh, political connections, all right? Yes, it was born in one day, if you want to look at it like that. You know, 1948, May 14th, 1948. It was born in one day. But let's look at it. That's the physical. Let's look at it like in the spiritual. In the spiritual, we're going to be born in one day, in that day, in that day. It says, so I, remember this, peoples, <laughs> this is a great study. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her child. As soon as she travailed, she brought forth her child. So I bring to birth and not cause uh, to bring forth, saith the Lord. Shall I cause uh, to bring forth and shut the womb, saith my, thy God? Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. All right. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. We are on the verge of that time, according to the scriptures. All right? Now, I could be wrong. I'm not a false prophet. I could be wrong, though. All right? I mean, I'm not saying I am a false prophet. I could be wrong in that. I'm saying I'm not a false prophet knowingly. Okay? If I'm saying something that's wrong or outside of scripture, maybe because of my interpretation, I could be wrong that way, but that doesn't make me a false prophet. It makes me someone that that um, really is just waiting on Jesus Christ our Lord and excited about his coming and just desiring so much to be with him that I see things in his word. And that just speaks to me clearly that that's the Holy Spirit guiding me. So I don't think the Holy Spirit is going to guide anybody into falsehood and lies and treachery. I think the Holy Spirit's going to guide us all into right truth and holiness. So, you can say what you will, you know, about, uh, don't say what you will. <laughs> Some people will get, take that as a carte blanche to go <laughs> all kinds of places. <laughs> don't say what you will. If you think bad, don't say it, all right? If you, if you're, if you enjoy the video, make a comment. If not, fine, okay? But I, I love you all. I'm thankful for all my brothers and sisters. We're close. God bless you all. I love you all. God bless you. And hope to see you very soon. I mean, we're close. Seriously. Remember, the 28th at 1130 is when Jupiter leaves Zava Java, starts to depart. Now, how much after that will it be? Could it be a week? I don't know. But it's darn close, all right? Remember, the 2nd of September is Elul 29, and that start, remember, that period of time, if we're going to do that, then we're going to go, we're going to, you know, we could go all the way to uh, Atonement, which is 10 days. That's also called the 10 days of awe. So, we just don't know. But we do know that the harlot is having her consecration. The harlot woman is being consecrated. That's what that whole thing means. Makudashet means consecration. God bless you. See you soon.